Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am a full-time kindergarten teacher who flips furniture on the side in order to earn a profit that I used to put toward my student loan debt. But since I got that paid off, I am now saving up for a down payment on a house. I am excited for you guys to be here today because I am going to show you something that is never before seen on FFT. I am going to be flipping an entertainment center and showing you how just a little bit of paint and some extra materials can help you transform an entertainment center. Let's get started. I am going to remove the hardware. When removing hardware, I usually like to use a drill just because it goes a little bit faster than say a regular screwdriver, but it's not essential. I am gonna be keeping this hardware for another project because I love using this type of knob, but for this look, I am gonna be replacing the hardware. A lot of you guys have been interested in how long these slips take me, so we're gonna time this for you. The next step here is to get to some cleaning. I actually forgot to tell you though, I got this piece for free from my neighbor across the street. They were so gracious as to give this to me. They had it in their garage trying to sell it. Wasn't selling, so they said, hey, you want this? And I said, of course. So grabbed it from there, brought it over. It's been hanging out in our garage for about a week and I couldn't wait to get started on it because I've been wanting to do an entertainment center and this is gonna be the perfect one. I've got my double bucket here and this allows me to use two sides because when I use the first side, when, the, when I clean, first time, this water gets really dirty and then it's always best for you to go back with some clean water, rinse all of the cleaner off and get any leftover dirt. I'm gonna be using the sunny side from Menards that I got and it is a TSP substitute. So it's just gonna get all the grease, grime, dirt, everything off of our piece so that the paint can adhere just a little bit better. Anybody else have all these little helicopters flying around their house? <laughs> they keep getting on my furniture. Alrighty, that's gonna dry in a jiffy. Once it's dry, we're gonna go ahead and give it a little sand. And the reason I'm gonna sand it down just a tad bit is to just get any imperfections out. Really, it's it, there's not very many scratches on it at all, but the outsides, I'm just gonna, again, smooth everything out. There's a few over here from when we were moving it around, but this piece is solid wood, I believe, but it's plywood. So it's solid wood um, and it has that veneer on top. So I'm gonna be really careful to not go down beneath that veneer. Then I don't even have to prime because the paint that I'm using is actually a self-priming paint. And because it's gonna be a darker color, I'm not worried at all about the color popping through. All right, so sanding time, you're gonna wanna get a mask. So I've got this little dust mask. It just has a filter inside and it's a replaceable filter, so it'll keep you safe. And then I've got my surf prep sander over here. I'll link it down below in the description. You can use my code FFT10 to get 10% off. It's a great sander. And then I've also got my Festool vacuum um, dust extractor that I'm gonna be using. So, oh, and I'm using 180 grit today because I'm just doing a little light scuff sanding.
All right, we're good on the sanding. So I'm gonna grab my microfiber cloth and just wipe away all of the dust and then we can get to painting. We want to get all the dust off because the paint will just adhere to the dust instead of adhering to the actual surface. So we need to get rid of all the dust. Get a lot less dust when you have a vacuum dust extractor. So that's one pl another plus of having the surf prep and the whole vacuum set up. So I know that this surf prep is a little bit on the pricey side and it's not something that's mandatory. However, it will save tons of time. And if you're interested in flipping furniture long term or giving a little bit more of an investment of it, then I recommend getting a surf prep system. However, if you are in the market for a little bit of a cheaper option, I did not start out with a surf prep, although I kind of wish I would have. However, I can link one down below that will be, I'll link a couple down below. One that's cheap, cheap, but still works, gets the job done. It'll just take a while. And then one that's like a medium price down there that'll be right in between. Before we paint, I am gonna actually remove these doors because I'm gonna do something a little different with the glass here, and I think it'll be easier when I remove it. So I'm gonna paint this and then we'll come back to the doors and I'll show you what I've got in mind. All right, here's the paint that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using Melange paints again and it is the color Jet Black. It looks just a tiny bit blue, but I assure you this is black and it has no undertones, which means it's just a true straight black. It's called Jet Black but I tried out their paint on a whim, that green, gator green dresser that I sold and I loved their paint, so I just had to try some more. I'm gonna pour it into a container here just so that I can have a little bit more control. I also ended up ordering a brush off of their website and I love these handheld brush. I've used one from Dixie Bell before and they just fit right in your hand. And this one's a natural bristle brush. You can get these pretty cheap on their website as well. Plus you can use my code FLIP10 that will get you 10% off of all of their products on their website. So I highly recommend that you try out this paint. I will show you how easy it is and it's self priming, like I said, and then once it's drying, it's also self leveling. Well, if you have a self leveling paint, you're less likely to get those brush strokes. Well, I'm excited to try out this jet black. Last time I used their paint, my piece sold in a matter of hours. So let's see if this can do the same thing. This paint has awesome coverage. Um, we'll have to wait and see in a little bit because I'm doing dark on dark, so I'm unsure if it's gonna need a second coat or not. We'll have to just see once it's dry. Um, generally, for the best coverage, you wanna do two coats.
got some burlap. I ordered this off of Amazon and we are going to replace, well not replace, but cover the glass with the burlap to give it a little bit of a different look. And this whole piece, and it's folded like three times, was only 16 bucks. I didn't really realize it was so much, but that way I can have it for more projects as well. What I am going to do is I first need to take this glass out. And this is actually a little bit different um, than I had anticipated. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna get the burlap to stay in there. I don't wanna glue it, but I don't wanna staple it because I wanna get it nice and tight. So I'm gonna take these out. These are just little edging pieces to hold the glass in. And I'm hoping that I can wrap the glass and then put these edging pieces back in and that it will still fit all together. We'll see though, it's a pretty tight fit as it is. So I'm just not sure if that's gonna cut it. Be really careful with this glass though. Right, maybe we should just do one at a time. Okay. Holy cannoli. It's windy. Okay, so I'm gonna take this piece of glass and we are going to measure it here. I'm gonna try to get the least wrinkly area. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do two layers of it. That way I can just use the other one as well. So I'm just gonna cut some, this is something that I've never done before, by the way. I've seen a lot of cane being used and so cane is actually becoming a hot commodity and it's one of those things that is kind of harder to get a hold of at this moment in time. I have seen some people do some burlap with their entertainment center window replacement and so I just thought that I would also give it a try so that way you guys could see um, actually, one of our supporters, Paige, will throw up one of her entertainment center photos here, but she is one of the ones who I've been kind of chatting with um, about her experience with the burlap and things like that. So I'm gonna try and give her method a try. Okay, got them both here, cut out. Now I'm gonna try my first idea first. <laughs> And that is to just simply place the burlap in here like this, and then to place the bur or the glass back. Now I'm gonna have to pull it tight so that we don't have any wrinkles on the front side. This might be a little bit easier than I um, anticipated actually. Cross your fingers, everybody. We are going to shove this back in where it came from. Now, not all entertainment centers are gonna have these, so if you find a different type, you might have to do a little bit of different things with the burlap to get it attached. This way, though, it's not a permanent attachment and someone could always take the burlap off later if they felt like it. And I probably should have painted before I put this in. Maybe I'll just be, I'll just have figured it out and then I'll take it all back out and I'll know how to do it when I get the paint and the top coat all finished. Don't you just love it when projects aren't tricky and they're just easy like you hoped they would be? Because I sure do. So like I said, I've just got to probably trim around the edge here and then it'll be a perfect fit for our door. And then when that's black and finished, that's gonna look awesome. So I'm gonna pop this out, but at least now I've got the gist of how I'm going to install the burlap. It's gonna be way easier than I imagined. So let's paint the doors. <clears throat> so I've used these painter's pyramids in some other videos and I really recommend getting some of these. These just elevate your 
piece just a tad bit off the ground and then you're able to get the edges down below. And so for these doors here, I'm going to give it a try and just kind of elevate it off of the table just so that I can make sure to not get paint everywhere. And then if I wanted to get the edges as well, then that would make it really simple to do that. I'll be sure to link these down below. They cost like 10 bucks on Amazon for two sets of them. And I think there's about 10 in each set. So plenty of little pyramids for your painting needs. Melange actually sends their paint in a plastic bag. So to reuse that plastic bag, I've just been putting my brushes in um, to then keep them for second coats and things like that. The doors are gonna dry now. And we're gonna come back over here and check out the piece. And actually it looks like it's all dry. And as you can see, it really is that black color. And I think that there's just some spots that I definitely need to touch up. So I think I'm just gonna give it one more coat of black. I've got the paint. And like I said, the best results happen when you've got those two coats. So I'm gonna do a light sanding and then we're gonna get to coat number two. The second coat is all finished up, so that's just gonna dry for a while here before we get the top coat going and before we can put the burlap in. So now it's a waiting game. It's time for the top coat. So also on Melange's website, they have different top coats available for you. And so I chose to try out the Walrus Furniture Butter and it is oil and wax Finish. So this is going to top coat everything and give it that layer of protection and it is made of, let's see, perilla oil, perilla seed oil, palmerizing safflower oil, hemp seed oil, carnauba wax, candelilla wax, and a hint of lime. And so it says apply a thin layer of butter to the entire surface and then allow it to dry, store it in a cool dry place. And then it is not for consumption, but it is 100% food grade safe. So that is one good thing. And it's also vegan friendly. So tons of advantages with this and I'm excited to give it a try. There it is and it says stir well, kind of like a waxy oily consistency here. It's interesting. Kind of does look like applesauce. <laughs> so it looks like a little bit is going to go a long way here with this. Um, so I'm excited to try it out. A new top coat that's not totally wax because 
Wax isn't my favorite. I like to use it here and there, but mostly I just like the liquid top coats. This is kind of an in-between thing here, so let's try it out. I've got a brush from Melange here as well that I'm gonna use to apply it. And with wax and oils and stuff, you kind of go in a circular motion almost just to get it into the surface. All right, well, the top's finished. I like this stuff. It's easy to apply, doesn't really leave any brush stroke lines, and I'm sure it'll even itself out as it dries. Let's get this burlap and glass back in there, pull it tight, add in the little trim pieces to hold it in, and then we'll attach the doors so that then I can put the furniture butter on those as well. Now we put the edges in first. All right, that is a done door. So in case you missed it the first time, all I did was I cut a piece of burlap about a little bit bigger than the glass. And then I am just lining it up with the insert, putting my glass in there, dropping it down in there. Then I'm pulling it tight, both from the top and the bottom as well as both sides. This will just make sure that everything's nice and snug in there. And also that there's no wrinkles out on the front. And then I'll just take my little inserts, little edging pieces and put them in as well. go second door done let's attach them and then put some oil on Alrighty, I'm just gonna insert the screws back where they were to begin with okay we'll 
do the second one over here. We are ready for the butter. I am gonna use these little gold T handles for the hardware. You don't have to drill any new holes or anything like that. Okay, Make sure that's straight. I'll link these down below. Got them on Amazon. There you go, that's straight. We're all finished. The walrus oil. I like that stuff. I'm excited to see what it looks like when it's completely dry because right now it's still wet. It's actually supposed to dry for that full 24 hours and then I come back and buff it out. In the meantime, I am going to go ahead and get this listed on Facebook Marketplace and then I'll just kind of field the inquiries and let them know that pick up tomorrow would be best. That way I can just finish it. I'll always disclose to them that it needs to cure over time and that my suggestion is that they don't set anything on top of it for at least a week or two um, until it's fully cured and it won't get damaged in any way. That's another question that I get a lot. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys and tell you guys how I get around that. But I do list my pieces basically as they're finished because I've got a lot of pieces going on here and I'm just ready to move on to the next one. Here we sit again with another piece that's not quite sold yet. I've had an inquiry and actually I think I'm gonna be getting a custom order out of this inquiry because they love the piece, but it's just not the right size for them. But lucky for them, I recently got a another TV stand, actually the same exact material and style and probably brand. It's actually a little bit longer, which is what they needed. And then it's a little bit shorter. So I'm excited. I'm gonna go to my storage unit, get the dimensions of that. And although this didn't sell for this specific video, I know it's going to sell, but I got a custom order out of this piece. So that just goes to show you again, I've said it multiple times, but these pieces are catching people's eye and then they may not want this specific piece, but they want something else that they have in mind and maybe you get custom orders out of the pieces that you post on your platforms for selling. I wanna do a quick review of the melange paint with the walrus oil furniture butter and the melange paint. This is the second time that I have shown you guys this paint on our channel. The first time was that gator green. The second time is this jet black. You guys look at this jet black. It is so black, but and it doesn't have any undertones. It's just beautiful, honestly. And this furniture oil, it took a little bit for me to like it. Um, I, it. It dried for two days. It said 24 to 48 hours and then I buffed it out a little bit and the look on it is just amazing to me and it'll continue to cure over time but it was so easy to work with, so much easier than wax. I'd say it's probably at the same level of a top coat. The only downfall about it again is that it has to dry for more than one day for you to even be able to really set anything on it. 
head over to melangepaints.com and grab you some paint and some top coat. And also when I put this on my Instagram story of me using this brush, I got a lot of inquiries asking me, where did you get that brush? I am looking for it. Guys, this is $12 on Melange's website. And then you use my code FLIP10 and you get 10% off. So that means that this is around $10. You cannot go wrong with a $10 brush and it's a natural bristle brush. Again, it fits right in your hand. I love this brush. I am really enjoying using this Melange paints. I can't wait to try out some other colors for you guys. I would never recommend a product that I didn't like and truly actually love to use. This goes on so smooth. There are no brush strokes because it's self-leveling. You guys have to try this out. And the piece speaks for itself when it comes to using that melange paint. We are going to keep this listed on Facebook Marketplace and I will let you guys know over on Instagram at Furniture Flipping Teacher when this guy sells and how much it sells for. I've got it listed on there for $275. So we'll hope that we get full price. The materials cost was about $30 in total between the paint, I didn't use all of it, and then the top coat, the knobs I already had, but I did account just a few bucks for that. And then the burlap, again, that was a $15 roll, but I didn't even come close to using all of it. So I just did a couple of bucks for that as well. And then I'll be able to continue to use that on future projects. As far as the time goes, I told you at the beginning I was gonna time how long this flip took me. This took me less than three hours. And keep in mind, we're also videoing the whole thing, so that takes a little bit longer. You know, Neiman makes me stop here and there so that he can get the cool slow-mo shots for you guys. But anyway, less than three hours to flip this piece. Between cleaning, sanding, hardware removal, adding the burlap, painting, everything three hours so you guys three hours on a saturday three hours after work one hour each day this is totally doable you don't have to flip a huge furniture set to get money from flipping furniture. You can do one piece at a time, get a little bit of profit and move on to your next one. So if you enjoyed this video, this was a fun flip, a first time for FFT and I really enjoyed it. I hope that I showed you how maybe you don't have to use such expensive materials such as cane to get this similar look. The burlap is cheap, but it still gives you that more modernized look around the glass just being in that door. So get subscribed down below if you guys enjoyed this flip. And also if you wanna learn more tips and tricks, I am going to be posting videos every Monday and Thursday as always. And I hope you guys stick along for the journey of us saving up to put a down payment on a house. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the flip side.